welcome to another episode and today kind of materialized pretty quickly. I got a message from my friend Andy at Power Vehicles yesterday saying that a couple of his mates were down from Hokkaido and would I want to do something with the cars that they brought down and I thought uh, yeah absolutely because uh, these guys came down with a beautiful uh, RX3 Mazda and a beautiful SA22 uh, RX7 both on Watanabe wheels and if you look closely both cars are on Sapporo number plates, which is a pretty rare sight uh, down here in Tokyo. Uh, but apparently these guys are involved in the whole car game. They have their own shop and uh, kind of do these kind of drives where they'll put uh, cars on the ship, ship it down here in, in Kanto and then, you know, hit up events and tracks and do a bit of grip driving here and there. And uh, before they go up to Fukushima uh, to Ebisu Circuit tomorrow for Formula D, we're going to, you know, shoot their cars a little bit and uh, drive them around Tokyo and just uh, enjoy seeing uh, a couple of you know NA uh, rotary cars especially a Savannah RX-7 which is you know a really really rare sight uh, these days in Japan most of these cars are probably being like shipped down to Australia or New Zealand and uh, even at you know rotary events like Sevens Day you, you don't really see too many show up so it's a bit of a treat and both cars are Pretty well sorted, really nice build, very clean, uh, lots of uh, attention to detail. Um, starting with this RX3 here, seeing the new Watanabe's 17s. You don't really see 17 inch Watanabe's on uh, older cars. This is a slightly smaller 15 inch model. But uh, let's talk to the owners and uh, get a bit of a lowdown on, on both cars. So, this is Aaron. He's the owner of both cars, yes. yeah. Uh, can you tell us quickly what you've done to both and uh, what you're doing on this trip? It sounds really uh, like a fun expedition okay, that you yeah, guys get get up yeah, to. Cool. So, 1976 Mazda RX3, got a 13B secondary bridge port, uh, Weber, Davis bag, electric water pump, side mount alternator, and everything else is pretty standard. Oh, it's got adjustable coilovers. Oh, and a whole lot of suspension in the front as well. Nice. So it's got all custom arms. And oh, yeah. They all come from America. And uh, you've done a 17 inch Watanabe yes. uh, setup. Why, why so big? Oh, I'm a little bit of a fan of slightly oversized wheels. All oh, right, nice. It's, it's good. I think they do them up to 18s now, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they do now, yeah. yeah. But I, I didn't want to modify it. The guards have only just slightly been rolled, so right, right. I didn't want to go too hard. And you're basically on uh, on an adventure, uh, yeah. ship the cars down from Sapporo. Yep, and then we're just doing a bit of a road trip around Tokyo, and then back up to, to drifting. You're driving all the way up to Hokkaido? Up to Fukushima, yeah. To and you take the ferry from where to go back? Uh, go back from Sendai. Sendai, wow, yeah. that's amazing. That's like well, a. It's just cool to get them out and use them. So. Proper Japanese road trip. Yeah. <laughs> so this one has the, the stock 12A. So Weber carb. Yes, Weber carb, and then just jet it to make it a bit of a Bridgeport idle. So. Oh, nice. Apart from that. So it's been ported? No, it hasn't. No. no. But I've tuned it to just sit there and idle like a little bit of a. Right, right, okay. So See what you mean. <laughs> otherwise, pretty standard. Lowered springs in the front. Yeah. And just adjustable shocks in the back. Uh, yeah, let's take a look inside because uh, you have a pair of really cool seats. So uh, these are Recaro with, uh, I think it's a custom houndstooth like yeah. center. So you, you found these second hand and you found these on Yahoo Auction. Oh, amazing. <laughs> I haven't checked out an interior of an RX-7 since I was, uh, RX-3 rather, since I was in Australia. And you still got the standard wheel too, original. Nice. So Ace Auto Japan, that's, that's your company. That's my company. What do you guys do? Um, I've basically got a retail car sales and we sell cars nationwide. You ship yeah. everywhere, all around the world? Yeah. Nice. And import as well. We've complied quite a few cars. Imported. Oh, you do it the other way around too. That's quite rare. Yeah. Nice. Where, where do you usually bring in cars from? Oh, I've had quite a few cars from Hong Kong. Okay. And America, England. Nice. Bit of a process to get it done, but yeah. Is it, is it more of a headache to import than to export? Probably, yeah. Lot, yeah. And, and this one is, uh, I mean, these cars basically are your stock, right? So they're yeah, always up for sale. they're not for sale. They're not for sale. No, they're no. too good? Yeah. <laughs> Can't sell them all. All right, let's take a look at 
the RX-7s in here. Completely stuck. Oh, man. So simple. And, and a dash that's not cracked. That's pretty rare. You can tell when cars have been stored and looked after well. So basically, I noticed one thing. As soon as you opened it up, it actually has a 13B. Of course, these, these cars came with a 12A. That's correct. Standard so uh, so wh where did you find this? Was this like a new engine or did you pull it yeah, out or something? Yeah, brand new built engine. Brand new built? All new parts. Is this ported? Yes, just secondary bridge port. Nice. Do you have any idea what kind of power it does? Or? Uh, maybe 250. 250? Yeah. Well, it's a light car, so that's yeah. plenty of... Uh, yeah. Plenty of fun. And you can tell it was a 12A because it says RE120 here. drive around Tokyo and uh, just to get some sounds you know the, these NA rotary engines sound amazing especially when they're bridge ported like the RX3 uh, we came to Shiodomi Italia this is a spot you may recognize if you follow me on Speed Hunters I like to shoot a lot here it's very un Japan like it's kind of like a paved uh, Italian road and I did the Liberty Walk F40 here uh, back in January in in the rain and here again we are in the rain checking out a couple of really cool rotaries. It's a bit busy today, but uh, just trying to find nice locations to kind of make these cars pop. So I am still driving the NSXR as my daily. Thanks, Ben. We're just gonna spend a few minutes here uh, to shoot the cars in detail. We'll go for another ride, maybe find something a little bit more traditionally Japanese looking than an Italian square. I have to say, I'm a massive fan of the color choice of this RX-3. Nardo Grey has quickly become one of the most popular colors uh, over the last few years, uh, starting you know, with Porsches, Lamborghinis, even Ferraris. Just the, the flat gray seems to really give a very unique take to a car. It kind of emphasizes the lines and it's subtle. It's not too showy and it just goes so well against black detailing like carbon fiber or in this case, you know, the big Watanabe wheels here and all the the powder coated uh, bumpers and the, the tail light trim and I love this exhaust so much. It's really cool to have a couple of rotaries on the channel for a change unless you haven't really realized. What I'm trying to do with this channel is to kind of show you as much variety as possible so I'm really trying hard to kind of you know progress through all the different facets that Japanese culture offers people and of course rotary. Rotaries are a massive part and um, coming up soon is going to be 7th day in July 
Uh, I can't wait to cover that. There's so many people from abroad coming to see that event. Of course, it's held multiple racetracks on the 7th of July. And then everybody convenes at Daikoku at nighttime or later afternoon. And then uh, off to Humiotaro for a bigger uh, celebration of all things rotary. So this car over here is a 1976. This car here is a 1979, so the first generation of the RX-7. And uh, we were actually talking together with Aaron before. Um, you know, growing up in Italy and the UK, I never really saw too many rotaries. This was the very first rotary I ever saw when I was probably in like fifth grade or sixth grade was this, the SA-22 was the first naturally aspirated rotary and officially imported into UK. So. Uh, it wasn't until I came to Japan that I got to see and kind of like understand the whole rotary scene in, in more detail. You know, where is Mazda going with this history? Like, I really respect what Mazda is doing these days. They've really uh, stood out for their own very unique and kind of daring design. You know, they do well on the regular production car side of things, SUVs, and you know, they have a new straight six engine and they do a lot of diesels even here in Japan. But I don't think they should really be just, you know, expecting the Eunice Roadster, the MX-5, uh, Miata to kind of support the whole sports car history that they have. They have a vast history that, of course, you know, spans back right into the Cosmo uh, with the rotary engine side of things. And I know it's difficult to get rotary engines up to spec when it comes to emissions. And, uh, uh, you know, they, they have a tough time, you know, progressing the evolution of what the rotary could be in the future. But when you see cars like this, you kind of feel nostalgic. You feel nostalgic for what they stood for and just how good they were as driver's cars. You know, they were all about being lightweight and, you know, very communicative and the sound was absolutely insane. So I really hope we do see some rotaries uh, coming back from Mazda, not as generators in electric cars. Uh, that doesn't count for me. And, you know, that we see the progression of the RX-7. I mean, it's a phenomenal car. There were so many others, you know, the Cosmo, the RX-3, the RX-8. You know, we want to see Mazda push that envelope and maybe combine a rotary with, I don't know, like an electric motor assist. That's what everybody seems to be doing to kind of balance it out emissions-wise. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, as Honda has shown us with the replacement of the NSX. I don't think that really worked out. It was a great car, but it had no soul. So we're moving one of the cars, the RX-3, to do some driving shots. And I just wanted to get you to hear how the rotary sound just bounces off these massive buildings here in uh, Shiodome. Probably understandably, every time I here and shoot a rotary. I really want one. Even an idol like this is sound amazing. Rich ported, of course, this one, 13B. All right, we're doing the RX-7 now. So slightly different, this is a 12A, so 1.2 liters if you really want to count uh, engine capacity. Uh, not ported, completely stock, just has a bigger carb. These Recaros are on point. Like Aaron was saying, these came, or were supposed to be uh, fitted in a, in a Porsche, but they look perfect in the cabin of the little RX-3, which is actually not even that little. Like I always have this image of an RX-3 being a tiny little car, but it's actually decently sized, especially for a 70s car. I mean, this in the 70s must have been a very big car, especially in Japan.
problems again in the middle of Shimbashi. So we decided to stop in one of the most picturesque uh, Izakaya Street in Shimbashi that goes all the way down towards the station and park the cars up. In a very typical Japanese setting. So cool. So there's constant trains above us, but as you walk past these with the NSXR in the background. Okay, so we're gonna wrap up this shoot uh, right now. I just wanna say a big thanks to uh, Aaron and his friends that came down from Sapporo and gave us a couple of hours to spend together with their cars and the chance to immortalize these amazing historical pieces, really, in a very unique setting here in Tokyo. I hope to meet up with these guys uh, when I have the chance to go up to Sapporo um, and get some kind of inside information of how you know the car scene is up there. Uh, but until then, I hope you enjoyed this episode and enjoyed a bit of rotary content uh, for the channel. <laughs> <laughs>